Hey, what is up everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be somewhat of a challenge tutorial. The challenge is going to be creating a basic Node and Express API with only using Docker to set up our environment. So what this means is we won't have any Node programs installed. So we won't have access to the Node Ripple or npm install or yarn install or anything like that. We are going to only be using Docker to create a project from scratch and run it on our computer without having to install Node at all. So let's jump right in it. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create something called a utility container. So in order to do this, I'm just going to create a Docker file and then I'm going to enter into that Docker file. And from here, I'm going to select a node version with a very light footprint. So the node 18 Alpine basically just means we are using node version 18 and we're running it on the Alpine distribution of Linux, which is a very light um, distribution. It's not like Ubuntu, which is very bloated. Then we want to specify the working directory and by default, we just call this app and this is it to create our utility container. So in order to create our utility container, we will have to say docker build and we want to build the current docker file we just created. We want to take that docker file and build it into an image. So we can say docker build dash T and give this image a name. Let's call it node util. And then we specify the dot meaning it will look inside of this directory for the docker file which would then result in the build of this image so now you can see docker is running we are pulling down all the images and this happened quickly we can now see a new docker image was built so now we can use this docker container so if we inspect our docker containers we can see there's currently none running but now we want to use this node utility image that we've created to actually go ahead and start our project. Currently I have Node installed on my computer, but let's take, let's imagine I don't have Node installed on my computer. That means I won't be ha having access to npm install, yarn install. So usually when you were to start a Node project, you would say npm init and dash y to create your package JSON. But we are not able to do that now because we don't have Node installed. So what we can do is we can use this Docker um, image that we created, run it as a container just to get access to node. And in return, it will give us like the output that we need. So this is very, very useful. Um, and I think it's a good thing to practice. So let's, let's jump in. So I'm going to say Docker run with the interactive mode. I'm going to be running the node util image. And I want to remove this container once the process is done. But the important thing is, if I were to run this now and say yarn init, we can see it prompts me all of these. We can see the container is running on the side and we can see it now goes through that package JSON steps um, in order for me to create the package JSON. So if I continue through this, it created the package JSON, but we don't have access to that package JSON because that command was ran inside of a container and we want whatever the output is to be mapped to our local computer as well. So how do, how do we do that? Well, in Docker, we can set up something called a bind mount and we set up a bind mount by, um, by using a volume. So a volume is a way of mapping or saving data from a Docker container onto our host machine. So there's a lot of different types of volumes. I think there's like two or three types. One is an anonymous volume, then you have a named volume, and then you have a bind mount. And a bind mount is a type of volume. So we need to use a bind mount um, when we run this command in order to save this package JSON onto our file directory. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to specify a volume. And in order to specify a bind mount, 
we need to provide the current directory we are in, but the, the absolute path. So I'm going to copy this um, on this file. I'm going to click on it and copy, copy path, which is inside of our current directory. So this is just a quick way of accessing that value. Then I'm going to paste this in the quotation marks. But before those quotation marks, I'm going to map it to the inside of the container to the slash app directory. So why the slash app directory? Well, when we created this image based on this Docker file, we mapped the entire app working directory to slash app. So once we run this node util image with this command at the end, it would do all of its outputs inside of the slash app um, working directory. So, so we want to bind the slash app directory inside of the container to our local file directory. So we can do that in this way. I'm just going to remove the docker slash and just add it so that the directory is formatted correctly. This is just due to Windows doing it a little bit differently. And then we want to bind in, into the current directory we're working in. So this is the node util container. And then we can run this command again. Once again, it will prompt us. We can just say basic API for the name now. And then just skip through all of the rest. And voila, we can see a package JSON being created. So this is pretty cool, right? So imagine we, have, we don't have node installed at all. All we actually need is Docker. So we can start creating this utility containers to do anything. So we can use the same utility container, but instead of saying yarn init, we can now say yarn add, and then we let's add the express package. And this will then go ahead and actually install and add this package to our current directory, which is very, very cool. So now we have express installed. So let's actually go ahead and remove this Docker file. We don't need that anymore. Okay. And I'm just going to go here and close that down. So now we have a bare NPM project set up. So let's go ahead and create a server.js file, server.js. And inside of the server.js file, we now can use express requires And I'm just going to set up a very, very basic express server here. We're going to just be listening on a hard coded port. And then we'll have an anonymous function just console logging out. Server is running on port 3000. So that we can just see that output in, output in the log. So let's just make a, a basic endpoint, just a slash health. And we will just take this request and response. And we'll just respond with JSON uh, where we specify a message where we say API running, just like this. So we have one endpoint on our express API, but that's all we need to get this quick and easy setup. So from here, you can basically start building out your your API as much as you want. And if you want to install packages, we can just use our utility um, container to in order to install that. So if you need Mongoose, you can go ahead and install Mongoose. And now if you don't have MongoDB installed on your computer, it's very, very simple. You just create a MongoDB container, um, which is a lot simpler than downloading the, the DB software, connecting all of the correct setups and ports and stuff like that rather learning docker and uh, be able to do it through that is, is much easier okay so let's try this out so we want to run this express server now so we need to go ahead and create a new docker file but this time this docker file will be for this express app so we're gonna once again say from node we'll take the same alpine version alpine and we want to create our working dir and just make it app. Then we want to copy in the package JSON and the, uh, into the current working directory. So the reason we're doing this is Docker related. I'm not going to go into this in depth now, but basically we're copying in this layer, we are cop copying the package JSON 
from our directory into the containers image. And then we want to run a command where we just run yarn to actually go ahead and install the dependencies once we are inside of this um, container. And then we want to do the following. We want to say copy everything that's in our current directory into the container. So the reason we do it in this order is just to um, take advantage of the caching mechanism of Docker. But first we copy in the package JSON. So now the container knows when it runs yarn, which dependencies to install. So it will create a node modules within that package. And then it will copy everything from our current directory into the container. But now you can see we already have a node modules um, installed here. So let's actually, you can either remove it or let's go ahead and create a docker ignore file. So this works pretty much the same as um, the git ignore. We can specify which folders and files directory to ignore. So we want to ignore the node modules directory. So with that set up, we can save this. And once we've copied everything into this um, container image, we can then run the command. And this command will be the npm start command. So if we save that, and we actually go to this package JSON and set the script. So we can set the script here. We can set the start script and set that equal to node server.js. Okay, so this is all we need. So let's take a look at this file again from the top. We are building this image up from the node Alpine package. We are setting the current working directory, copying the package JSON, installing all of the project dependencies, which is only express and its dependencies. Then we copy everything from this directory into the, con into the image. And then we will run this command once we create a container from this image. So let's actually go ahead and do that now. So I first need to actually create an image. So this is just the configuration for this image. So you can say Docker build and give it a name of express server. And once again in the current directory. So now it will go ahead and download the node Alpine server. It will configure everything and you can see it actually cached it. So it's very quick because we already used the node Alpine to, in order to create our utility. You can see there's a new image being added. There's currently no containers running. So let's get this container up and running. We're going to say Docker run interactive mode, and we're going to run the express server image. And if we um, remove this image, or when we close this image, we want it to automatically be removed. This is just for, um, you know, saving some space. And I think this is it. So let me see Docker run. Yeah. This should be it. Let's run. And we can see we have a node express server up and running. So if I were to go to my browser or let's open postman and I'm going to make a request to the server on the slash health endpoint. Okay. So with postman opened, we can go to HTTP localhost. It was 3000 and then the health check. We can run this and we see nothing. The reason for this is this port is inside of the Docker container. So we want to map this port to our local hosts port. In order to do this, we can just close up this container. We can see the container stopped completely, which was that RM flag. Now we can run this again, but this time we can use the P flag and we can map this to a port. So we're going to map the internal docker 3000 which is this last one to the 3000 of our local computers host so we can run this again we should see the same output but this time if i go to this endpoint and run we can see the message api is running so this is how you can use docker to basically start up any project without having to download um, your programming software you can pretty much do this for any development environment um, it's obviously playing around in order to get it set up um, the way you would. But once you've got it set up, it's very, very handy. This can be used in many different ways. For example, when utilizing um, build steps in pipelines, um, these type of utility containers is used a lot of times in order to generate artifacts. 
um, for example, building a project, then taking the dis dist or the output of that build and doing something else with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.